Hey everyone, this is lesson 11.2.3 on surface area and volume of a sphere. So this is the last uh, 3D shape uh, we will be talking about in terms of surface area and volume. Um, here's a reminder of ones we've talked about before and their formulas in case uh, you needed a uh, reminder of these or you needed to copy these down again. Uh, we have volume of prism and cylinder. Uh, simple formula to kind of remember how to find the volume for both of these shapes. The only difference is the base shape. So remember uh, to find the area of, or the volume of a prism means probably your base shape is going to be some type of uh, rectangle or square or maybe even a trapezoid. Uh, hexagon. It could be any, uh, really any two-dimensional shape, uh, except when it's a circle, then it becomes a cylinder. So when that base shape becomes a circle, it's a cylinder. Uh, the one thing that doesn't change is the height. It's still going to come from uh, the height of that uh, 3D object. All right. Same thing for surface area. Uh, the main thing uh, that we get from the actual object is the height, uh, but everything else really comes from the base. So area of the base and perimeter of the base uh, will help you get your surface area. So uh, formulas for uh, pyramid and cone were the same as well, uh, but these were different from prism and cylinder, uh, mainly the one-third in front of the base area for volume. And for uh, Surface area, you'll notice there is not two bases, but there's only one base uh, instead of two bases. Uh, we're still looking for lateral area, uh, except uh, this is a more general uh, description of what you need to do. Um, with prisms and cylinders, we had kind of a simple formula, perimeter times height. Uh, but for the most part, this is still the same thing as lateral area. So that's where we add up all the faces. All right, so um, that's just a, another reminder of uh, all the formulas. It's definitely something worth having uh, either memorized or copied down. If you're ever taking, uh, doing problems from homework or even on a test, uh, if the formulas are useful for you to have, I would probably have those near you. Um, so the last shape I mentioned is a sphere. Uh, and so the main way we would describe a sphere is it looks like a ball. Uh, and so a sphere is basically made up of uh, tons of circles. So if we actually slice uh, open uh, our sphere, kind of like if it was even like an orange or something, if we actually cut it, you'll notice that uh, there should be a nice circle that goes around um, that sphere. So which really just means, and depending on where you cut it, uh, the circle, the size of the circle is going to change size. So there's actually, really this is just made up of a bunch of circles uh, that make it look like a sphere. All right, so it's, it's like, a, imagine if we cut this into really thin layers, every layer is going to be uh, circular in shape. Uh, so the nice part about this is the only thing that matters to us is the radius. Uh, this is probably one of the, the easiest uh, uh, shapes to find volume and surface area of because as you can see, I've already have the formulas for you. The only letter that you need or the only value that you need is the radius. All these other numbers will always stay the same. Uh, so uh, volume is going to be four-thirds pi r cubed, pay attention to the exponent, um, because it does, obviously that has a huge impact on the answer, where surface area is going to be 4 pi r squared. So different exponent you'll notice. Uh, so on all the other surface areas, we had to add things together, like a base plus uh, a lateral area. In this case, it's already been uh, simplified for us uh, into one simple uh, formula. So that that uh, definitely helps us out a lot. So 
here's a general idea of what the picture looks like. Uh, some options as far as making this problem more challenging. If the radius is not given to you, they might give you the diameter. So that could be another option as well. So besides uh, maybe just some other random stuff, I could definitely make this a lot more complicated and give you angle measurements and um, arc length. We're not going to do very uh, complicated problems uh, for spheres. Uh, that's something I'll let you do uh, probably on a higher level math class. Uh, for this, for our purposes, we're just going to focus on the basics. Can you use these formulas to find volume and surface area? All right, so let's, we're going to practice just a few problems, uh, and then we'll cut this short. Uh, so uh, here's our first problem. I have basically the same picture. I just put a measurement in uh, the diagram. Uh, when you are drawing these, uh, basically you're going to draw a circle. If you're ever trying to draw a sphere, um, you're pretty much going to try to draw uh, a circle as best as you can. Um, it kind of depends on how, how big you want it. And then to make uh, a picture of the um, kind of where the radius is, you're just kind of curve, draw a little curve, uh, maybe it looks like a belt that kind of dips a little bit. Um, and then you're going to kind of do the same thing. Oops, you're kind of you're gonna do the same. It's not letting me write. Oh man. So you're gonna do something like this. Maybe do a dotted line in the back. I should have done dotted lines on my original drawing. Uh, and then the center, the center of the circle is gonna be right there, which means you're gonna have a radius. So when you draw these out, uh, try to do your best to make it look as good as possible. That way it helps your understanding um, when you're looking back at these. So here we have uh, a radius given to us. It looks like we have a measurement of four inches for the radius. Uh, we're going to calculate our volume and surface area. All right. So I'm going to set this up for us, and then I'm going to ask you to do, do the calculations on one of these. I think I'll, I'll work out volume on this one for you. So I'm going to start this off with 4 thirds uh, times pi times radius cubed. We're going to plug in our 4 for the radius, and that's pretty much it. So we just have, all we have to do is do some calculations. We are going to leave our answers in terms of pi, uh, just to make this easier for us as well. Uh, so uh, our first step would be really to multiply maybe 4 cubed. So 4 times 4 times 4. Um, and let's see if I did this correctly. So uh, 4 times 4 times 4 is going to give us 64. All right, so this is, let me write that out. So volume is equal to 4 thirds, uh, and then I'm going to put 64 and pi at the end. So now I'm looking for 4 thirds times 64. Uh, if it reduces nicely, uh, then I would try to do that. If it's going to give us a decimal answer, then I would not write a decimal, especially since we're going to leave pi in our answer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply 64 times 4, the number on top, uh, which I believe gives us 256. So this is 256 over 3 pi. Oops. And our units are going to be inches cubed. All right, so for the most part, uh, I could keep this as my answer. If I want a decimal answer, then I definitely have a couple more steps to do. Uh, reduce the fraction and then, or divide the, fra the 256 by 3 and then multiply by uh, pi. So uh, for surface area, uh, we're going to pretty much do the same thing. Uh, this is where I will ask you to do this one. Tell me what you get. 
So I'm going to set this up for you. Uh, we're going to plug in four again. And let's see if you can finish this up. Uh, final answer. I want you to tell me what the final answer is going to be for our volume. And don't forget to leave uh, pi in your answer. And don't, oops, I just no, noticed something. I put volume and this is supposed to be surface area. Sorry. How embarrassing. So surface area, surface area. Yeah. All right. Uh, so sorry, let's do this again. So I want to see uh, what the final answer is going to be for you. Uh, and don't forget your units if you want this to be correct. And don't forget to leave pi in your answer for this one as well. All right, uh, so let's see uh, if you're doing this correct. So we're going to multiply four times uh, four squared is going to be 16. So let me actually, I'll rearrange these again. And then I'm going to multiply four times 16. And I think we've seen these numbers before in the other lesson. Uh, this actually comes out to 64 pi inches squared. So hopefully you got your units correct. If you put inches cubed, your answer would be completely wrong. If you multiplied 64 times pi uh, and you have some decimal, you would have got this wrong as well because I said to leave your answer in terms of pi. So be careful. Make sure you're following directions. And that's pretty much it. Uh, I just have, I think I just have um, a couple more for us to do, but for the most part, uh, that's kind of the general idea of what you need to be able to do. Can you plug in a number and can you simplify it? So here's a variation to the same problem. Uh, so I'm going to... Um, ask you, I'm going to do a little bit less work here, uh, but I'm going to see if you could do this one on your own. So again, we're just plugging in the radius for this. Uh, so see if you notice what's different about this problem. Um, I'll give you a hint. The radius is not given to us. The radius is not given to us. Uh, so I'll, I'll, that's all I'll say for now. Uh, so let's see if you can uh, get a final answer. After you're done, uh, your answer may or may not have a fraction in it. Um, I think possibly not on this one. But you should still have pi in your answer. And don't forget your units again. So let's see if you could... Uh, tell me what the final answer will be for your volume. All right, let me correct this other one too. This should be surface area. All right, uh, and so let's see if you plugged in the right number. I mentioned the radius was not given to you. Uh, the diameter was given to us. So this is why this problem's a little bit different. So if the diameter is given to us, so diameter is equal to six inches. That must mean that the radius is equal to three inches, right? So half of this, uh, half of this segment is going to be three. So this is going to be a three, All right? So that means we're going to actually be plugging in a three into our formula, not a six. All right, so we, when we calculate this, uh, you're going to have 4 thirds, and then 3 times 3 times 3, I believe that's 27 pi. And then the nice part here is uh, you can multiply 4 times 27 first if you'd like. Uh, but I do notice that 3 does go into 27, so I could actually reduce those as well. So uh, this actually is the same as four, oops, uh, four times nine pi.
by. So 4 times 9, you should end up with 36 pi inches cubed. So hopefully that's uh, the final answer that you got. Oops, wrong color. All right, and then surface area. Um, we're looking at the formula of 4 pi r squared. Now that we've kind of figured out what the radius is, uh, let's see if you could tell me uh, what oops, pi. Let's see if you could tell me what your final answer is going to be for surface area. Uh, don't forget your units. Leave your answer in terms of pi. Again, uh, let's see if you could do this one. All right, and so we're going to plug in the 3 again, which means we're going to be left with surface area equals to 4 times 9 pi. Well, you'll notice on this one, uh, we're actually left with um, surface area is equal to 36 pi. Did we get the same answer? You might think yes, but no, it's not the same answer. Why? Because our units are inches squared. So that is two different type of units. With, even though those numbers look the same, the units change uh, the actual value. So um, it's like saying, do you have 36 giraffes or 36 um, elephants? The number might be the same, but they're definitely different in size. Uh, so keep that in mind. Make sure you have the correct units uh, when you write out your volume and surface area. All right, so last problem I have for us uh, is really the same type of problem we just did, except there's no picture. So do we really need a picture to do this problem? So one is you could always draw it yourself. So if you feel comfortable sketching a picture, because if you think you need a visual of it, then do, then go ahead and do that. Uh, draw your sick circle, maybe even uh, do a little image, re just recreate everything that we've been doing so far, and then see if you could figure out what the radius is from the problem, and then label the picture. So. I'm going to try to do this without the picture and just kind of read the words. Uh, one is, I'm, it tells me I am looking for volume and surface area. So we're pretty much doing the same thing. And it says that we have a diameter of two feet. All right, so right away I know that I'm going to use this information. So diameter equals to two feet. Well, what does that say about the radius? Because I don't want to know the diameter. I want to know the radius. So that means we're going to end up with a radius of one foot. All right, so that's enough information for us to figure out the volume. All right, so uh, this is going to be 4 thirds pi r cubed. Don't forget that. And then surface area, uh, we're going to use 4 pi r squared. All right, just in case you need those formulas in front of you. All right, so on this one, I'm not going to pull, I'm not going to set it up for you, but I want you to tell me what the final answer is. So final answer uh, for this uh, volume equals. Don't leave it, your answer in terms of pi, and uh, uh, it's okay to have, oh, don't forget your units, and it's okay to have fractions in your answer, so no decimals. All right, let's see if you got this correct. So if I plug this in, 4 thirds times pi times radius cube, our radius is 1, so if you know anything about 1, 
uh, 1 times anything gives you 1. So it doesn't matter what that exponent is. Uh, we're still going to be left with a final answer of 4 thirds times pi. And we're looking at, oops, these are not inches. These are feet uh, cubed. So if you got the wrong units, technically that's wrong. If you didn't put any units, for sure that's wrong. So make sure you pay attention to the units. We've been using inches on the previous problems, but on this one, it's feet. So in this case, feet cubed for volume. All right, and then the last one, see if you could tell me what the final surface area is, final answer. Um, and let's see. Okay, let's see if you did this one correct. So same as volume, we're going to plug in our radius of 1. And 1 squared is still 1, which means we're going to end up with a surface area of 4 pi. And this is going to be feet squared. All right, that's pretty much it. Uh, the hardest part is really remembering these formulas, which is why... I personally always have to look it up and write it down or else I will I will mix these up all the time so it be, definitely becomes easier when you do a lot more of them uh, but that's the general idea of what you need to be able to do uh, that wraps up uh, this lesson and that wraps up this chapter uh, and then possibly it wraps up this school year all right uh, let me know if you have any questions.